Well, we're back for another day, night, whatever. And I'm still kind of fiddling with this rear end. I've done a couple little things, nothing big. But that mini spool I bought doesn't fit. So I don't think they make one for this. And I just can't live with one wheel spinning, you know? So let me show you what I got going on. This might be a little hard to see, but these replace the side gears or spider gears or I, I don't know, whatever they are. Anyway, those replace those. Then you have this block and you just stick that in there and then you put that pin through the middle. Well, the pin doesn't fit this at all. So I'm going to have to go buy a drill bit, I guess, because I don't have anything this big. But I do have a drill press. So I should be able to pull that one off. And then the second problem is, is uh, this doesn't fit at all. So I guess I'll, when the time comes and I get these drilled out, I'll just shave each side of this down until it fits in there. Both of them do. And you know pray that pin lines up and uh, that's you know not the right way to do it but that's pretty much all I got it I had a posy carrier laying around here but I can't find it because I'm terrible like that so I cleaned out a lot of the gunk it's still very not good but it's just gonna have to do for now until it grenades and then we'll figure something else out but I figured I'd just give you an update on her and uh, I don't know let's go find something else to play with maybe well, I went ahead and popped the master cylinder on there and we're just gonna bench bleed it you know on the car and not on the bench because it's easier so basically what you do is just fill about half full of fluid and then uh, just slowly depress that pedal and you'll see air bubbles pop out of here in fact it's doing it already and uh, once it you know stops pushing out air and starts pushing out fluid uh, you're good probably good enough to bleed anyway so uh, let's give it a shot you know what would probably help if I hooked up the brake pedal all right take two See the bubbles? That's what we're after. you want to look for nice firm pedal it's not ideal but it feels pretty good and there's no bubbles coming out anymore that I can see it's probably okay I think we'll just send it and move on there we go it looks real nice this is some kind of residual pressure valve or something I don't know it doesn't have a proportioning valve like I'm used to Kind of weird and i had to make a brake line here so i just used some of that nicop stuff i had laying around and it's real easy to work with it's not the best looking in the world but i don't know it gets the job done it's easy except it's leaking that's good my flares not great but anyway i guess we'll move on to the calipers because i need that 50 bucks back from the core charges on them things well, first impressions here are less than good, I should say. Whoever ran this last, they wanted every penny out of those brake pads. Now this groove is actually factory. Uh, so that's an original rotor, I, I would assume, or a replacement, you know, from the dealer or something. But, uh, this one is actually looks okay. I mean, yeah, I hit it with the wire wheel, call it good. 
but let's go look at the other side. This one you can literally see is thinner than it should be. There is no brake pad left and you can't feel this like I can, but uh, well, it's kind of like a mountain range. So I'm going to ignore it and pretend I never saw that. And uh, we'll just clean it up and run it until I can you know, buy me some rotors. It'll probably work good enough for what we're doing right now, but if we want to drive uh, any distance, I'll, I'll probably replace at least this one. But anyway, let's pop the calipers off and, uh, you know, really dig in. We'll probably go ahead and pack the wheel bearings while we're in here. I'm sure they're totally salvageable. So your first step of these is always to pull the caliper off. And, you know, it looks real promising. I'm, I bet it don't give me no trouble. Yeah. No trouble at all. Threads aren't even rusty. There it goes. Even the brake lines came free on it. Yep, that uh, they got their money's worth out of them bad boys. All the way down to the rivets. Really, this rotor's probably salvageable. If I could find anyone that turned them anymore. Nobody seems to do that anymore. So we'll throw that in our core pile. spring in there to keep tension on it or something maybe they all had that I, I really don't know this looks really lovely enough that we can hook it there we go she's coming Ugh. half of it Get your uh, one size fits all wrench here. Wow, that's pretty shocking. Not a drop of grease to be found, mind you. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that's not salvageable but by God we'll try that's not supposed to be stuck on there bearing is rusted to the spindle. Don't know why I expected anything else. The bearing is still... Well, no, it's bad. Alright, well let's spray her down with something. Yeah, that bearing's actually fine I think but uh <laughs> if I can't pack it <laughs> that's the problem I've never seen this happen before all kinds of new things yeah we're gonna end up destroying this <laughs> trying to get it off wow I really don't want to buy a spindle Let's 
try driving it on. Sometimes if you give them a little wiggle, they'll come off. Yep, there goes the battery. Wow, this is truly impressive. Just had to get it broke off of there. It's been in one spot for a long time. It's a shame. You know, they don't make these in the U.S. anymore. I hate destroying any of them because usually they're salvageable. In fact, I mean, this thing looks terrible, but... I wouldn't be shocked if she just comes right back around. Even enough of that, it'll probably be fine. They uh, really do not make things like they used to. It's a Timken bearing made in the USA. God bless them if they still make them here, but uh, it's cliche as all get out, but uh, I'm going to use that again. Sucker sat in a, you know, underwater probably for the last, you know, 50 years, and if we could have just got that other one off, it would have been just as savable. I'd rather put $10 of brake clean into this damn thing than spend $10 on some Chineseum thing. Yeah, she'll come around just fine. I think we'll just soak her in some penetrating lube, and we'll clean up the rest of this. And, uh, I guess I'll have to wait till I get an inner bearing, unless I can find one laying around. Here's the two bearings out of this side. And, uh, they're pretty much salvageable. They're pretty good. They looked about like the other one, but they came around real nice. I just gotta buy one now. And I went ahead and, you know, rebuilt everything up here on both sides just for giggles so that'll look pretty nice when it's all slapped back together but gotta order another wheel bearing and uh, I guess that's about it well we're now ready to potentially reinstall axles uh, probably shouldn't Probably you should throw this rear end in the trash. I'm not going to do that. That would be wasteful. So, what I ended up doing is I turned that spool down. Well, I ground down the side pieces. I turned the spinner pin down with my bench grinder. And uh, now I'm going to just, you know, burn it in with a MIG welder. And, uh, you know, cross fingers and have amnesia all of a sudden. That'll be the way to you know, make sure we never remember we did that. So, that's game plan here. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put the axles in, and then we'll weld her up. And, uh, you know, we'll just fill it up with grease, and seal it back up, and say, yeah, it's got a posse. I didn't realize there was still a part of that bearing in here. And that sucker is hard, man. It took a chunk out of my one of my good chisels, even. I didn't realize those things were hardened like that. So what I'm using is a burr bit on this die grinder. And I'm just trying to chew through it. Then maybe we can break it apart in pieces. Well, there's the culprit. I uh, chewed her up pretty good, but what are you going to do? That's crazy. I would have sure thought they would have made this softer than the race it sits in. Well, I don't know. I'm not a machinist or engineer. But I'm going to try to smooth that out as best I can because I wrecked it pretty good. It'll be okay for what we're doing, though. Well, that's installed. But now I find myself with the clock. Do I throw this ingenious piece of engineering away? Or should I frame it? Perhaps mount it on a trophy or something. For its just 
absolute marvel of intelligence, really. I mean, this isn't your run-of-the-mill bailing wire. Oh, this is some kind of heavy-duty fence wire here. Look at that tight curl there. They really committed to this. They really thought that that was going to give them the look that they needed. And that's worth something in my book. I don't know. Just uh, spritzing up my brand new, super high performance, heavy duty, autocross rated F1 formula springs. They're red, so you know that they're fast. So I'm going to go ahead and burn some weld in here because these blocks in the middle are just sliding on this shaft, probably because I turned it with a bench grinder. And now there's not enough there to hold them in place. I'm assuming that if I burn them into this, it'll be stronger than it at least is right now. And, uh, well, I don't know. That's all I got. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to burn them in. And I'll probably throw a weld around that shaft. And I mean, it's probably going to grenade anyway. And we're just going to toss this thing most likely anyways. Let me give my best imitation of a weld. Hmm. I've apparently filled this with something incredibly flammable. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And this is why I don't weld. But let's just go for it. Well, this has successfully been converted into a live grenade. So I'm gonna just, I want to take bets right now. Uh, how many brake stands do you think this thing will do? You want the over under on four? Let me know in the comments. Well, I went ahead and rebuilt on the diff cover. Check that out. Didn't quite make it. Looks like probably 32 to me. That's a worthless caliber. So. I don't have a gasket for this one. So we're just gonna do the right thing and just, you know, get on there, you know? Lots of the RTV. So, uh, I'm gonna do that and then we'll move on to the brakes. You guys have any tricks for keeping these things after you use them? I got about a hundred of them and every one of them, the tip is clogged up. Except for this one, it barely comes out. I usually end up cutting a hole in the side and just splooshing it out that way. But there's got to be a better way. If you have a better way, let me know in the comments, please. When you're setting these wheel bearings, give them a little bit of mustard. Push that grease down in there. Then back them off. Let them freeze spin. Then just make sure that they spin, you know, relatively free. This one is probably a little bit crusty still because I'm lazy. But it's okay. So just then make sure you tighten to where the cotter pin goes through. You always want to tighten to it. Don't loosen to it. Make sure you're at least on a tightened stroke. And that'll make sure that it's not trying to back off on you and, you know, wipe out that family of 12 on the highway. Now, there's our finished product. Don't worry about that paint. The brakes will just strip that right off. We got our new Chinesium hoses, our new Chinesium calipers, our new Chinesium brake pads, our new Chinesium bearing in there somewhere. And, uh, yeah, it's going to work just fine. And this 50-year-old brake line, nothing to worry about. Just, if you see me on the highway, maybe keep your distance. So there's some stuff in here that I don't recognize. This is in line with the rear brake line. What is that? Do you guys know? Let me know in the comments, please. Uh, is it like a residual pressure valve thing? We're gonna try to get this line off. And it actually, I mean, they all look like they're in fairly decent shape. So I'd like to save it, but we gotta get that off so we can change out this rubber hose and T back here. So, I don't know, let's give it a shot. I 
soaked it last night, but I don't know. Who knows? Trying to delete on this exhaust pipe. You know, not that it's not perfectly fine, but uh, we'll keep this. Don't worry about that. This is kind of hard to do one-handed. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Ah, but DeWalt to the rescue. Yeah, we'll keep this. That would be kind of cool to throw back on there. This glass pack is probably still good. Give me that authentic 1985 trailer park tone. Tell you what, never ceases to amaze me. The things that are just coming free on this car without a fight. I don't understand this at all. I don't think I've ever gotten one of these off that was original. Yet it does on this of all cars. I don't know, man. It's weird. It's really weird. Makes me want to move to the desert, that's for sure. But, I mean, look at this. It's not grease. It's mud. It's definitely been underwater. Oh, let's get this popped out. Then you got to pop a little E-clip off here. Slip that sucker out. Then we got to try to get these free here. That those aren't a big deal to replace. There is freaking brake fluid in this. There's probably nothing wrong with this hose. How is that even possible? That's that is brake fluid. That's not water. That is insane. Why? How? Who? Where? All right. So it looks like this one's gonna break loose, right? Well, then it gets kind of stiff. So when you're doing these, and if you care to try to reuse things you probably shouldn't reuse, just Get them to where they're stiff, and just work that back and forth. Look at that, there's fluid coming out of that. Bizarre, man. But just work it back and forth, and you'll be able to get past that. Usually, it's actually the fitting is stuck to the line, uh, not rust on the threads. So, you just want to get it broke off of that line. And I'd say, you know... At least three out of two times it works. There's your brake line, T. It's just got this little bracket on it. Those lines are fine. They're full of brake fluid, too. Bizarre. So, I'm just going to toss some wheel cylinders in it. I don't know if you guys need to see the whole process of doing it, but, you know, maybe I'll just bring you in every now and then. Now, I scavenged these old brake drums here. And, uh, this one's less good. This one's actually pretty nice. But, you know, we're just going to rebuild them. Yeah. Yep. Done. Basically new. We'll paint them on the car so we don't got to mess with sticky paint when we're trying to... So there's your new wheel cylinder in there. Now, a couple of little tips here before we just, you know, shoot through this. I bought hardware kits, and you can buy new hardware for like $6. This is from O'Reilly. But, this doesn't include everything. This is just your basics. So, anytime you take some drum brakes apart, it pays to just store the old hardware somewhere. And, just in case, you might need it. Like a strut rod, or whatever this is, strut bar? your parking brake strut. I mean, you could buy all this new separately, but it costs a fortune, and there's, you know, what, is this going to wear out? It's a piece of metal. So, there's that. And, second thing is, you don't need fancy brake tools. I have some fancy brake tools. They're fine. But a pair of ice grips just does the trick on almost everything in here. I mean, it... You combine this with a little bit of uh, elbow grease, and uh, that's pretty much all you need. Let's uh, dig in here and toss a brake together, and then we'll toss another brake together, and then I guess we'll bleed them and, and have brakes. Here's your finished brake. 
I think. I don't think I missed anything. I forgot to order brake adjusters, so I, you know, salvage the old ones. Hopefully they work. But that's pretty much all there is to it. Throw your drum back on and you're good to go. Once your brake drum's back on, that's when I usually paint them. That way I can just let them set and I can get all my other work done. I am a big fan of Rust-Oleum paint products. I think they're the best. I mean, you know, one coat pretty much gets it, even on this crap rusty metal. And it's like $3.90 a can at the Walmart. Never hurts. Don't be scared of drum brakes, fellas. There's nothing to be scared of. There's more moving parts. They're a little tough, but you guys can figure it out. I got confidence in you. Y'all are a smart bunch. You're watching me, so you must be. Now, when that's behind the wheel, it'll kind of look like, you know, cast irony, you know, like it's supposed to look. It's something to give a little bit of pizzazz other than just, you know, spraying them black. Hello. Welcome back. Or maybe we're still here. Either way, I think it's time that we put the heart back in this thing. So I will go practice my speech as we prepare for the ceremony of Holy Union so that I may pronounce this engine and trans. Almost got ahead of myself and forgot to put the flex plate on. We're going to reuse the original one from this car uh, because the other one had some marks in it I didn't really care for. And this one actually looks okay. I think it's the heavy duty uh, flex plate. It's about twice as thick as the other one. So that's kind of cool. But uh, a couple of things. These are not symmetrical. Uh, it only goes on one way. The flange, where it flanges out, always goes out. And uh, always put a little blue thread lock on your bolts. You know, especially if you're reusing the old ones. Put a little, just a dot of it on there and when you ram them down. and they give you a little peace of mind later on. You don't want to hear it telling knock-knock jokes. pronounce you engine and trans you may now hopefully survive that sucker's heavy man all right let's let's bolt the rest of these bell housing bolts up and uh try to slip her on in i guess it goes nothing You've never done this by yourself, let me tell you, it's a blast. Mm. 
good thing is, you don't gotta worry about scratching it. There you have it, guys. That uh, took me about eight minutes, 30 seconds. That's how to install a uh, Pontiac motor and transmission by yourself. It's uh, not in there right, but a little bit of fiddling, you know, it'll go in there. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe, like, hit that bell for me. Um, we're gonna keep on trucking on this thing. I know it's a bit of a grind, but that's the way a project goes, and you guys know that. It's a long process. This car's rough. <laughs> so, exciting things will be coming. But we gotta go over that rocky road first, if you know what I mean. Anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, you guys have a pleasant day, and uh, we'll see you next time.